Hey everybody, Tarek Morshed here with the Morshed Group at Sotheby's and uh, here to just share what's happening in the market, what's happened in Q3. Uh, as you guys know, we do a quarterly market update, uh, which are all housed on our website. So you can see past updates there too, but uh, let's dive in and talk about Q3. On the heels of Q2, it really has been, again, kind of an insane uh, performance in the market. Uh, September, kind of, you know, the last month of the quarter did end slightly lower and it, with a little less intensity. But when you take the average of uh, August, I mean, uh, July, August, September, making Q3, uh, real, real incredible intensity in the market. And uh, prices shot up about another three to four percent just in that quarter, similar to Q2. And supply actually banded down even lower. We're at a one and a half month supply in the market, guys, which is probably the lowest amount of inventory I've seen in about 24 months in our market, uh, if not even longer than that. So, you know, for, for those of us that, or for those of you guys that don't understand the, what that means, a kind of a bridged version is a six month supply point is typically where the market is considered a balanced market between buyer and seller demand. There's enough uh, housing in essence for about six months out and that's considered an equilibrium market. So anytime you're below that, uh, you're typically getting a higher than average appreciation and certainly demand is outpacing supply. And so at a one and a half month supply, typically that translates to you know, something insane like 10 to 12 percent appreciation in that year in the market so that's a pretty key point that we actually hit one and a half months supply in q3 uh, and i'm referencing some of my notes because i got a lot of stats this uh, quarter to share with you guys uh, so sales are up 31 percent year over year in terms of actual volume which is one of the biggest numbers i've seen in a while uh, active listings are down at the same time 44 percent so you've got tons of demand yet you've also got a lot less uh, inventory to choose from that's directly correlating back to that one and a half month supply and so far both year over year as well as year to date we're running at about a 10 percent appreciation rate so far just in the first three quarters cumulatively uh, which is again very very strong if we break down the price bands a little bit uh, between zero to 500 uh, we're at about a one month supply, so even lower than that one and a half month supply market wide. Prices are up about 10% so far year to date. I think we're going to end up probably up 12% in prices in that price band, which is a little bit higher than what I projected last quarter. Uh, between 500 to a million, uh, supplies come down a little bit more to three months. Uh, which was about four, four and a half months last quarter. So again, that's tranching down and getting compressed even more. And uh, so far we're up seven to 9%. Uh, I bet you're gonna end up at 10% up on that price band. One million to two million, staying about the same in, in Q3, about a five month supply. And uh, you know we're gonna see six to 8% uh, in, through Q3, as well as I think probably about seven to nine percent by the end of the year. Above two million, uh, kind of your uh, luxury, as I truly call it today, and <laughs> given our prices, we are up about 7% on prices. Inventory is interesting. It's really high on homes that haven't been updated uh, or aren't real state of the art, newer construction, and uh, those are really sitting for a long time with long, long uh, market times, but anything that is really remodeled, up to date, or brand new construction is just not lasting. Uh, I would say actually that this is probably the strongest luxury market I've seen in all my time in Austin, Texas real estate, uh, where for example, in some of our listings in that price band, we're seeing five to six showings a week. Uh, that's the most by far I've seen in, in my 20 plus years in that price band uh, in terms of just activity and demand and act, most of that is coming from buyers from coastal markets. Uh, and I think we'll end up seven to eight percent by the end of the year up in that price band. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at currently. You know, let's talk about some significant factors leading to this. Might sound like a little bit of a repeat from what I said in Q3. But I'm going to start with or lead with a little bit of a different tilt. Uh, and that is that, you know, I talk a lot about in migration and jobs added and interest rates. 
uh, and that's what I talked about last quarter uh, on our update. But uh, what I want to bring some focus to is just the number of companies that are now moving here to Austin, which has always been a, a lead indicator for us. However, this year since COVID started, it's even more intense than it's been in the past. So for example, just in August and September, we've had 24 companies relocate to Austin, Texas and bringing about 23 to 2,500 jobs. And that's just in two months, guys. And that's not even including your big boys that have announced such as your Amazon and your Teslas and BA, BAE systems, which just next year alone will probably create three to 4,000 jobs in just by those three uh, companies themselves. So new companies and relocations because of our business environment, because of the talent that's here, uh, cost of living, and uh, just, just kind of the talent pool. Uh, and the cost of business in other states, such as California, a ton of companies since the pandemic have started moving into Austin, Texas and setting up HQ or other arms here. Uh, outside of that, uh, in migration, of course, uh, you know, like I said in our last quarterly update, we are up about 20% or we're up 20% in, in migration from last year on pace for about 60,000 new people. Uh, I think we're still on track for that, and that's certainly bringing a lot of buyers into the market. Also, a lot of buyers that are coming from a more expensive market, which ties into that luxury piece that I was talking about just a bit ago. Interest rates are at 3% or a little bit less, which is insanely low. That's going to drive real estate pretty much no matter what the environment is. And then unemployment took even a further dip. Uh, down to 5% from 6.5% in uh, July. So August, we're at 5% at unemployment, which is number two in the country. So, you know, when you put uh, number two, meaning top, you know, in the top two uh, uh, lowest unemployment numbers in the whole country. So when you add all those factors up, you know, no wonder even with the pandemic that Austin has performed the way it has. Uh, and I think we'll continue to perform in that way. So looking ahead, uh, I think that we'll be on pace to do seven to 10% appreciation, uh, kind of market-wide in all price bands and areas. If you dial it in a little bit closer, let's say in central markets, I think it'll be closer to 10% unless you're in downtown, which is seeing a little bit of a shift this year with the pandemic. I think that's temporary, you know, with people just worried about being in closer quarters and such. But, you know, our downtown's not that dense, so I don't see that as being a long-term issue. Uh, I think that's going to be an issue until things settle down from the pandemic and then the downtown market's going to do uh, and perform just as strongly as the other central areas, but still going to do okay. Uh, and then your suburbs are probably going to be at 7 to 8% in terms of appreciation, which is really strong for the suburbs. Your in-between market, let's say city, uh, but not downtown or central and yet not in the suburbs kind of within Austin city limits, we're probably going to see, you know, somewhere around eight to 9%. Uh, other two couple of things to keep an eye on construction costs. Uh, they are on the rise, uh, which is probably not the best timing for many markets, but building costs, remodel costs uh, have actually spiked with the pandemic because of supply chain issues as well as, of course, all the natural disasters that are happening all around the country, which is, of course, in turn impacting our local market, too. When you have that factor, plus the demand between lifestyle, in-migration, employment, and companies, uh, well, then it just creates that much more of an environment where prices kind of don't have a choice but to go up, all because supply is so low, and then you kind of add in labor costs and, and uh, material costs specifically moving up. Uh, and then... I do think that one thing to keep an eye on is possibly locally a little bit of a retraction in the end of Q4 or early Q1 next year. While I don't think that's going to be a problem in our market, really, uh, it is something to keep an eye on where startups, local businesses that have kind of been able to get through this really tough, tough year in many ways, you know, can they make it in, in past, uh, you know, a whole year of this and going into next year? So I feel like there may be some attrition coming in that way, uh, but I also feel that within migration, with the companies moving here, as well as construction costs, where 
they're at and where they're likely heading, it won't impact us too much, but we might see a little bit of a slowdown. Maybe we go from a one to two month supply to maybe a, a three or four month supply in the end of Q4, early part of Q1, and then we're rebounding right back up. Um, so I don't see a depreciating environment there, but I could just see a little bit of a pause almost like within the cycle, a little cycle within the cycle. So I know that was a lot I shared, but hopefully that was incredibly helpful. Uh, as always, we really strive to bring you what I call irreplaceable value in the marketplace. Uh, as always, reach out to us if there's some specific things and like specific locations, areas, price bands you want to talk to us about. And as mentioned earlier, go to our website as well as our social media platforms uh, where you can see all our past quarterly market updates. Thanks for joining and we'll talk soon.